And welcome to another episode of Experts Speak. I'm Michael Delon, and today I'm talking with a dear friend of mine and somebody that you're going to really love, David Wolf. David, thanks for being with me, man. Thanks so much for having me, Michael. Great to be with you. Well, you are welcome. David is the founder and owner of Audavita Studios. He, um, they, they do a lot of things. They do audiobooks for us. They do podcasting for us. And he just has a wealth of knowledge. And, and as we set up and talk about podcasting, what I call profitable podcasting. Uh, David, I, I wanted to bring you in because you're such an expert and you have such a, a, a good perspective on all of this. But um, at, before we get in there, give us a snapshot, man. How did you get into this? Who are you? And, and give us just a, a Reader's oh, I, Digest version. I here. appreciate it so much. Um, great question. So um, I came from the music business. I'm a uh, originally a drummer and a keyboardist. It played and like a lot of musicians do, I learned the business in Chicago. Uh, and uh, was a gigging musician, as they say, and eventually transitioned into being a what they used to call a jingle writer, or a, yeah, I learned how to score for film and radio and television. So if I had a th roughly 25 year career doing that for big brands and small brands and medium size and children's programming and working yeah. in publishing. Uh, folks might remember Barney the Dinosaur, one of our yes. clients, Chuck E. Cheese and this children's side. And then we did stuff like for Southwest Airlines and, you know, McDonald's and Embassy Suites Hotels and all whole lot of other brands that you've heard of and then some smaller more regional players but our clients were advertising agencies and this is really where I learned the language of audio for branding and the language in an abstract way although we were working with voiceover actors and verbal content much yes. of the time and whether it was through lyrics or just producing the voiceovers that go with the commercials we were producing for radio or tv yeah. it was uh it was largely the abstract of music uh one of the hardest things by the way to sell because you're selling this abstract thing Thing, moving through time that right. very few people uh, that are in advertising really understand how to communicate what it is they need. So it was a, an interesting and, and very high bar in terms of uh, the promise we made to our customers and wonderful conditioning for what we now do. So over the years, I did some other business things and came back around to my roots about four years ago and assembled a team. We're now based in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, most of us. We have an extended audio production team that's actually worldwide. I could say that uh, guys in Austin and in the Midwest and in New York and here and there, uh, a little bit in the UK, but uh, we're, our core team is in Albuquerque. We're not, uh, we're a virtual company, even pre-COVID, we yep. always were uh, of doing things that way. And we'll talk more about how we do what we do, but um, it's a remote virtual recording production company that produces audiobooks and podcasts, as you said. That's great. And I love that because, and, and we can dive into that is because you've got the technology to, somebody can record an audiobook from their desk. Yes. Or a, 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 a podcast from their desk, but you've yes. got the producers guiding and that's really cool. Before we get there. Yeah, let, let's talk high level. Uh, podcasting is, is, is all the rage. It has been for quite some time. And at the same time, there's this barrier to entry for most people. I talk to mm. people all the time and I ask about podcasting. And they're like, yeah, I thought about that. Uh, I don't know how to do it. Don't know why to do it. Help us understand some of the the higher level thinking as far as, you know, thought leadership and, and why should a business owner actually have a podcast. A podcast is really one of many ways to express an individual brand, an enterprise brand out into the world. Our line is connect your voice to the world. So in a very mm -hmm. basic sense and fundamental way, this is you introducing yourself as a brand your company is a brand positioning yourself in the ecosystem of audio in this instance. Yeah. And in many cases, streaming live video, which we also yeah. are now doing more and more of and or pre-recorded video. In other words, a video podcast, audio podcast, but for our conversations and most of our clients, we're working in the audio domain, which is wonderful because uh, what it does essentially is it takes, and we were talking about uh, before we started rolling, it takes old school radio, which used to be appointment listening and yes. takes it into the internet, which now it is on on demand listening, like Absolutely. a lot of what we do on Netflix and you know Hulu and all those other places for our entertainment. So now you have a world where anywhere, anytime, uh, your library of content can be um, consumed by an audience that you want to activate in some way. Uh, fill your the top of your funnel from a sales perspective, um, broad stroke the brand to get it out there in a way and position yourself as an authority online, all of those things for thought leaders, for business professionals, for professional speakers, and for authors. We talked a little bit about that. Yes. Many of our uh, author friends have actually begun doing podcasts. And you, this is right down in your wheelhouse because of the the, uh, the crossover and the yes. ability for them to communicate with the audience they're trying to reach with their books as well. 
Totally, totally. And you know, our, you know, our system has a, a broadcast built into it where we're interviewing our clients on every chapter of their right, book. Right. And, and the beauty of that, as, as you alluded to, it allows them to communicate through their voice. So there's another, when I read your book, right. I, I, I hear you in my head, but when I hear you on the podcast, I get your tone, I get your resonance, I get to know who you are. And if you're doing a video podcast, now I get to see you and I start bonding with you emotionally, yes, which is exactly. so, so very important. Well, you're, uh, you're pointing to something that actually is a, a it, we talk about this in terms of traditional radio, uh, even more than video and television. And is, there's, a, there's a built-in intimacy to this experience because it's one, one voice to a microphone to one set of ears, one listener at a time, your audience of one, many ones in your audience. And yes. so rather than saying, hello, all, as an example, all, all of you out there in uh, podcast land, yeah. uh, th this collective addressing of your audience, it's, hey, how can we help you? Let's, or we want you to learn how to do x y or z and here's why this is important to you the most important word when we podcast or do radio is you so uh you know and it's just like i i, I uh, the intimacy and the power of that and it, it does come you were talking about audiobooks a moment ago it's the same thing one yes. author connecting directly with their audience it's how beautiful it really it really is and it's funny because as i thought back through the books that i've read through my life which are you know numerous but the audio that I've heard, and yeah. many times they have a third party person doing the audiobook. Yeah. Uh, one of the best bo audiobooks I've ever listened to, honestly, was Dave Ramsey in his yeah. Entree uh, Leadership book. Yeah. And it's just Dave, and I bonded with Dave because the way his passions came out. And I thought, right, you can't pay somebody to do that, right? And, and so there's always, when I was in radio, um, I saw Christian radio ads for years. Yeah. And I always opted for the owner as spokesperson for their business. Yes. I always wanted the owner on radio. And they're like, well, I don't, I'm not a radio guy. So I don't want you to be a radio guy. I want you to be you. And exactly the true, the true authentic self when we produce audiobooks and this is also true in podcasting but in audiobooks one of the first conversations i have when we're about to embark on it is who should be the voice and many times we have an owner operator or a business leader that's maybe not feeling like they've got the voice oh i've got a twang i've got an accent i'm too raspy i'm too hoarse i'm too this i'm too that our objective is not to make them a professional voiceover or radio, right. just as you uh, talked about a moment ago. It's just to help them deliver the most authentic and connective um, performance that they can in the moment we're recording. And we're there to help guide them through that process. Right. So now let, let's talk about podcasting from a from a, um, a credibility standpoint, right? Because yes. that's what I'm all about. So we, right. for our, our purposes, we create a great brand strategy for our client. We, we create right. an Amazon bestselling book. And now we've right. got the podcast that we're setting up for them. We're going to interview them on their book, but now that they're that part's done, so let's say they have ten episodes. Yeah. Now we want to take it to the next level. Talk talk to us a little bit about the mm -hmm. ease of that and how they should be doing interviews with people, inviting people. What? How long should a podcast? Well, I mean, yes, yes. I'll start with your last question because it's the easiest one to answer. The data says that about 24 minutes for a podcast is ideal. It's the sweet spot. It kind of, I think it's because it coincides with the kinds of activities people do when they're listening. They're walking their dog, they're working out, they're taking a walk, whatever it is. So, um, so this 24 minute, 30 minute zone is a good target zone. Um, one of the, yeah, one of the, the questions I get most often is how do I monetize my podcast? And that sort of sets up this, this waterfall of things you can talk about in terms of why do a podcast that answers that question. Um, in the early stages of podcasting, you don't have a developed audience yet. So you really do need to think of every guest you invite on your program is someone you want to engage with, you want to bond with, potentially do business with and really um, sort of uh, uh, unpack their business so as to position you as an expert, but also to create a bond. When you're there recording in a conversation with someone, and particularly if they haven't done a lot of it, <laughs> it, it, it just feels good. It, it feels does. good for them. And you know, not only will they say yes to coming on the show, as opposed to if you were to call them for a sales appointment. Yes. Uh, so there's that. It's like an enhanced sales bonding recorded experience that's so powerful. Uh, to build a relationship. So um, I, I, that's the first line of offense is what I like to say. Here's how you start monetizing your podcast. It's also the way you start activating your audience development because when you bring them on, they will promote their appearance on your show where yes. they were highlighted and featured. So uh, totally. those are the, really that, that legs you into it. And we can talk a little bit about CPM or programmatic advertising as it's called. Mm -hmm. As you begin to grow your audience, 
the partnership we have with the DAX network, uh, through DAX network, say that fast three times through sounder, which is where we host all our podcasts, uh, enables us to place advertising on a dynamic basis. So a pre-roll, a mid-roll or a post-roll to generate incremental income. It's not big money until you have a huge audience, but it is sort of this, nev this other layer of revenue that answers the question, how do I monetize my podcast? Uh, the, the next type, and this is not so much credibility, but also if you have a, uh, associations with products or services that you may want to promote or resell as the host right. of a podcast. That's a, a third or fourth tier. I've lost count now of a way that you can uh, monetize. But yeah. I know that uh, we, we want to focus on the credibility of, of the host and how to build that and also fill their funnel into the sales uh, uh, yeah, of and, whatever it is they do, it's product or service. And, and, and you, you hit on something that's, that's really key is it's that almost it's, it's much better than a cold call. Right. If I yeah. called you and, and I don't know you, but I want to know you, it's so much right. easier for me to send you an email or something. Say, hey, David, I've got a podcast. I'd love to have you as a guest because I've watched what you do in the community. And I just want to talk about you and expose my audience to what you're doing. Would you be willing to have an interview and, and be on my podcast? Yeah. When How you beautiful do that, is I mean, that? Yeah. Rare is the day somebody's going to say no. They never and, do. And, and I've been shocked, honestly, at we've reached out on our podcast to some what I would call big players. And we're like, yeah, they're not going to answer this email. And they do. And they're just casual. Right. They're just normal people. They love to give and to share. That's beautiful, Michael. I mean, in terms of like the early podcaster having this, the, any doubts about whether you can get good guests in your show? I mean, I was an early adopter. I came in in like 2008 or something with Small Biz America. It was a show about entrepreneurship and I was amazed. And this was early, so it wasn't as crowded a market that you didn't have the almost 2 million uh, podcasts you do now. But I was getting some major talent, major uh, business leaders on my show and I was pretty green. I was still learning how to do the art of the interview, which is a yes. whole fascinating subject in and of itself. Well, it is. And I tell business owners that part of our playbook is yeah. to, to get five questions right. that you can ask every guest. That yeah. way you don't have to think about it. And they're softball questions like, David, how'd you get started in this? Right. You don't have to think about that answer. You just, right. 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 So make it simple. But you just talked about how many podcasts there are out there. And that, that stops some people. They're like, well, it's, it's saturated. Do you know how many books there are on Amazon? It's not about how I much, know. how many podcasts are. It's about your branding because when I go to a podcast, I'm looking for the David Wolf podcast, right? Or the Michael right. Delon podcast. Right. I'm, I, I, we always put the client's name in the podcast because that's how people are going to search for you. Of course. Most people don't know it's called Experts Speak, but it's ex Experts Speak with Michael Delon. So you yes. brand yourself that way. So they're not they're not searching through two million podcasts. They're searching for you back to that one that you talked about earlier. It really is a narrow and deep kind of scenario, Michael. It is. Yeah, it's a it's a well. Then what happens is people get to bond with you, right? Because you're you're sharing your expertise, but you're really propping somebody else up. Right. And there's that relationship back and forth. How about, uh, so we talked about length of podcast, 24 minutes is kind of the sweet spot. Now, doesn't have to be like our podcast are 10 minutes for the, our clients to start out just to get them started. What about frequency? Once a week, once a month, twice a week, how often should- well well, well, great. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And this is an interactive question with the, the business of the business, the business of your life, right? Totally. Ideally, I think a week is a good interval. It's a good cadence. You, you're establishing that momentum. We have some that do three mini-sodes, like they'll do solo uh, monologues, sure. and then they'll do a long form on a weekly cycle. And we have others that are doing alternating weeks, which I think is probably the minimum. I do yeah. have one, we have one client that is doing, a, um, when the seasons change, uh, they're in the food space and so they're just doing every season they do a new release and it coincides with some other work they're doing so that's a slightly modified version for but for most of the folks you and i deal with on a daily basis and, and my advice to people that are looking to leg into this space is a weekly would be a great target if you can if you can handle it and look you can you, the whole point of my company is to strip away the complexity or the perceived complexity of how to do this we have an end-to-end -end recording system that looks a lot like zoom some of our clients even use zoom and we simply capture the video and or the audio and repackage it for distribution on Amazon, um, uh, sorry, uh, Apple, 
uh, Spotify, Stitcher, uh, keeping all this in my head, right? Yeah. iHeart, TuneIn, Amazon, and Google, the, the magnificent seven channels that there we uh, take people out to as we yeah. produce. And every time you drop a show, it, it channels out to all it, of those. It goes plus out your own you. website. Yeah. Well, plus your own website. And then as a good marketer, you're going to put that out on your social media channels, your YouTube channels, your yes. guests. You, you structure yes. it with your guests to say, here's how yes. you promote it, yes. driving people back to your website, to hear it, to opt in. And it, there, there's an entire strategy around podcasting that we provide to our clients. That's why we call it a profitable, profitable podcast. It's not, it's yeah. not a purple pill. It's not a magic bullet, but when you think about credibility and being a thought leader, you know, having a book yeah. and a yeah. podcast and now a video, cause you said earlier, you can take a, you can do a video podcast and now you can put that on YouTube or LinkedIn or wherever your website, right. you start looking like this media guru and in a sense, you need to be that for your audience. And what you and I do for our clients together is we strip away the technology, the complexity, so that all of these things that we're talking about that sounds like a big deal to do, all it really requires you to do is show up on your microphone once a week. Uh, typically, you may be, some of our folks record a couple shows and it's at, a, at once, and then yeah. we time release them over, you know, we schedule them out in an editorial calendar. So there's different ways to schedule so that it's fluid, it can fit with your life and with your business, it doesn't interfere at all. It's not like this other layer of responsibility. And if you've got a group like us that's doing the editing and the post production and the distribution, yeah. all you have to do is show up with your guest. So. And it, it, it makes it so much fun to yeah. I mean, honestly, when I when I come in on Monday morning, I look at my calendar, and I say, man, I got right. three or four podcasts this week It's like, way cool, because right. I don't have to prep for them because I have my questions. Yes. I know what they're experts at why I'm inviting them in. Yes. And then when I'm done, the team takes care of everything else. Well, the and five question. Yeah, exactly. Sorry. To, the, the five questions is interesting. And it also creates this ritual that uh, listeners that listen to your podcast, they can know what to anticipate. You know, it's right. kind of like going in the store and knowing where the milk is and which aisle it's in. They, they get used to this ritual. And so every time they listen, oh, yeah, he's going to ask that question. And it starts to feel comfortable. And it's part of that audience bonding that happens with your guest as well. Uh, this, this sameness of yes. uh, the ritual idea. Yeah, very much. And and when, just when you do it right and you're authentic, people want to bond with yeah. you. And and for us, it's that credibility of being that thought leader, mm -hmm. but using the podcast as a marketing arm to reach out to those centers of influence. Yes, yes. Because I, I'm a big proponent, David, of, of selling people in bunches like bananas, which means I can call you and try to sell you my product. But yeah. it's much better if you have an audience that listens to you that is my ideal audience. I want to build a relationship with you so you will send your audience to me because we don't do the same thing. Right. And so I call you a maven, right? Yes. The best way to get a maven and, and an introduction with a maven is through your podcast. I love it. I love it. it. Just no, it's this simple. network effect and uh, the sharing of content, the uh, the distribution and redistribution through these uh, centers of influence. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful model. And the other thing that we haven't hit on quite is the shift from over the many years from from um, centralized media where only the people that are um, celebrities yes. are having shows to a place now where it's democratized and any business owner, any thought leader, any author, speaker, etc can have and center themselves in a media way that was only available to a major it, talent. Well, it is. And, and, and therein lies the importance of having some, a team like yours behind you or, or putting thought into it because, because anybody can podcast that in a right. sense lowers the bar, kind of like self-publishing right. books. Well, anybody can right. do it. Well, right. brother, I've seen a lot of self-published books and yeah. they look like self-published books. Yeah. There's, the There's no credibility there. Same thing with a podcast. If you if you don't have good quality, good microphones, understanding of the technology and, and the right. bumpers and, it's going to sound like a podcast, like a self-published podcast. So even though the bar is lower now that the entry level, anybody can do it, you still need strategy and thought and partners to make it great. Because when that partner, when you interview somebody, they're going to listen to one of your shows. That's if it right. sounds like crap, they may not. Yeah. Want, well, you yeah. Know? You're talking about the aesthetics, the listener experience, yes. the packaging, the bow around the podcast. If you want, if you like, it's it's the intro, the outro, building that with the voiceover introducing you, which really helps position you and I'll say prop you up a bit yes. as a media personality. It makes you feel like what we used to refer to as a you know a media professional on a news show. Right. Uh, and this this uplifting and this up leveling of your brand through the podcast, the aesthetics of it is a 
lot of what we focus on, particularly in the beginning stages of working with a new podcaster. Yeah. And that's great. And you mentioned brand there and I'm a big proponent of brand strategy. So as a business right. owner, you know, we always work on brand strategy and that brand strategy should reflect on your website, yes. in your book, on your podcast, yes. in social media, everywhere that brand strategy. So it's consistent because right. that your audience needs that consistency to build the trust yep. in order to, to buy from you, but also to refer you. And that's the other thing, cool thing about podcasting, David, is, is I can share that episode. It's hard to do that on a radio program. That's right. You can't and do it. It's a can. different, it's a whole, it's a real, it's a, a, a meteoric shift in, in how uh, content is being consumed. Uh, how, I don't know how, there's a lot of ways to say it. That's one of a thousand ways to say it. It, it, it really is. And, and to, to build that intimacy that you mentioned earlier with an yeah. audience yeah. Um, and, and doing it. And that's why I love what you guys do is making it simple for the business owner, because we're, we're business owners. We're busy. We're doing what we do best. Right. Podcasting many times isn't it the technology. I have a message to share. You make it really simple for somebody to step into that, that world and go, yes. I want to do a podcast. Here's my thought process. How do you help me? And you're like, show up on the zoom call and it's done. Right. And it really is that simple. So yeah. that's, that's what I, I love about what you guys are doing. Well, thank you, Michael. And it, it, yeah, go ahead, please. No, I was just thinking, you know, think now as we start wrapping this up, think about a business owner, uh, whether they're an author or not, you know, all of mine, all of mine are, but sure, um, sure. in podcasting, what, mm -hmm. what's your counsel to somebody who says, you know, I've thought about it. What's the next well, step for them? Can they talk, can they talk absolutely. with you guys or what, what's the. Sure. Well, thank you for that. Yeah, absolutely. Look, I'm happy. And this is what I do all day. My career now is about talking to people that are interested, intrigued in the podcast world. So uh, we talk them through what's this experience going to be like, what's the time commitment or uh, how much of the work do we take away from them? So we minimize the time commitment. Yeah. A lot of times that's the barrier to entry. Not only is it the equipment thing, which people tend to stumble all over, which is much, much simpler than most people think. It really about. is. It really uh, it really, really is. It, basically, you're talking about a USB mic, a set of earbuds, plug it in and play. And then our producers come in with your guest. Um, you know, so it's so what I say to them and really that first conversation tends to be this isn't as hard as it looks. Uh, it will really if you dedicate yourself to it at the level that, you know, it's with uh, with ease that we uh, create for you, uh, it, it should be very effective for your brand, your business, and fold into the overall strategy, which I know you help uh, uh, your clients. Uh, well, we do because you know, for a yeah. business owner, you know, if you're obviously if you're an author, you can start looking at the table of contents of your book. There's right. a content. We tell people oh, to create right, a content right. calendar. Right. What am I going to talk about for the next quarter? Well, right. you're a food person. Well, in this quarter, what if you're a swimming pool company? What kind of podcast can you do? Dude, we're coming up to summertime, right? What kind of chlorine's available? How do I take care of my, how do I get all the weeds out? How do I get the moss out? There's all kinds of content out there that you educate people, right? So we always say, create a content calendar, use a Google sheet or something and create a content calendar. Say every week, here's my, my calendar. And then just show up and be yourself. Just show up and be authentic. It's just yeah. about you being you. Most of these podcasts, although you'll have your five questions, you'll find that your those five questions are really seeding a conversation. Oh, that's you know, you can is. say they're follow up questions, but really it's a conversation between two uh, people that, and it's very fluid in terms of the listener experience. You, I'm glad you mentioned the editorial calendar. That is one of the things that we put into place right in the beginning when we're working with folks, uh, because it, it just it takes the uh, enormity out of the thought process. Take the love the chapters in your book. I've always yes. been a fan of that model where you, you really you, your editorial calendar is born for you it in really this book is. you've already written. You're very much what you're doing is you're bringing alive what you wrote into a um, a real time interactive experience for a listener that yes. just helps pro uh, propel your brand and position you further. It does. And, and the, the difference to me between an audio book and a podcast, the audio books to me felt like they were actually reading the text of the book, right. which is OK. Right. A That's podcast right. is here's the topic I want to talk about today. We're talking about taxes and retirement. OK, here's the reality of it. And you're getting me. They both have great value. Sure. Just a different. So when you come That's to right. podcasting, I don't want you reading your book to me. To, no, I don't want I want you. 
Right. You want right. me alive in the moment, present, interacting. And, uh, you know, and as technology with podcasting and the ability for us to engage more individually with our listeners, that yeah. sort of technology is emerging now as we talk to our partners that are doing sort of the techie part of putting them out there with the players and with the ability to share and with the ability to chat. And, you know, and, and I'm, really sure it's coming. I'm, on communications. I'm, I'm sure it's yeah. coming, David, that the, the yeah. technology is going to know I'm listening on my phone. It'll say, well, hello, welcome, Michael. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. <laughs> for listening to another episode of my podcast. I'm Thank sure that's coming. It's, it's absolutely coming. All the, the AI scary. stuff. Oh, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, have you talked to Jill today? You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. So yeah. That, that's, that's really what I wanted to talk about and just highlight the, Beautiful. the idea that podcasting is this, it, it really is a great credibility building tool, but it's within your reach as a business owner. And, and yeah, don't let the technology or the account, don't let any of that stop you. Follow the playbook that we give you. Or if you're not one of my clients, reach out to David at audivita.com, right? Yes, audivita.com, A-U-D-I-V-I-T-A.com. We've got a wonderful team, one of the blessings of my business. And, you know, I, as I mentioned, I transitioned from the doing all of the work myself and doing all the creative generation of music. Now I've got a beautiful team. I'm still orchestrating, but I'm orchestrating this marvelous team. It's all about the people. And one of the things we do when we first meet with someone is we make sure that they know the who behind our business. And that yeah. gives you comfort and gives you a sense of family around this process. So it isn't just this cold thing uh, called podcasting. Right. Well, and, that, an and that's the other, absolutely because yeah. when you feel comfortable with the team that you put together, it makes everything so much easier. And if they've right. got questions, they ask, and your producers are like, "No, no, absolutely. let's just do it this way. Chill out. If you make a mistake, we can fix it." So oh yeah, no, no, we're editing stuff. It's not live. Some of our folks do live; they're comfortable with yeah. it. Others, we do editings to across the spectrum: light editing, massive editing, depending on how what the format of their show is. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's 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 true. I mean, really, I'm happy to have a conversation with anyone who's just sort of, as you say, thinking about it, but doesn't really understand what right. what's involved for them. So. Right. And the and the other aspect that we haven't even touched on is you get that podcast done, you you can take that. You guys syndicate it to all the platforms, but a right. business owner can take that and translate that episode into a blog post or an article or a white paper or a, or a, or an email. Yes, piece. yes. There's so many ways to market it once you get it out. And I, do, I mean, you know how we create books through speaking, right? We have a speak to write process. So our, our clients don't type out their book or write. They speak it to us. Exactly. The content flows so much faster. Same thing. Take your podcast. Exactly translate into a into a blog post social media post and an email now you've just got four different marketing vehicles there from one episode. Yes, yeah, so all the repurposing po potential that you're talking about, Michael, in terms of, and th there's fabulous transcription software now that does this. We take your audio, we pull a, a rough transcription, an editing pass, and you've got your blog post, you've got your chapter of the book, you've got whatever it is you're going to use it for going right. forward. And yeah. it just makes marketing more coherent, more um, concise, and more compelling. Mm -hmm. And you can always link people back to the podcast, right? In your email. Hey, hear, hear me talk about this here. It, it's right. just this great circle. So it, right. it really is strategy. When you think about creating your profitable podcast, David and his team at Autovita can really help you just reach out to them, have a conversation, see if this is right for you and um, take podcasting, put it into your business as part of your credibility marketing mix. And then your podcast will be a profitable podcast. Michael, I'm grateful. Thanks so much for having me on and uh, for visiting with me today. And I value our relationship the way we work together as well. It's yeah. been terrific knowing you. I do too, David. I love you. I appreciate you. And uh, we'll talk soon, buddy. All right. Be well.